It's just a mask, you guys. Don't be a jerk. It's for the greater good. <laughs> it's just a vaccine, you guys. Don't be a jerk. It's for the greater good. <laughs> In four months, the U.S. was transformed into an obedient socialist country. Government dictated what events are acceptable to attend. Violent protests that instill fear are okay. But church services, family funerals, and patriotic celebrations are dangerous. <laughs> and you bought it without a fight. <laughs> Standing in a graduation line is a safety hazard. Small businesses were forced to close, but crowds to support the corporate money machine at Walmart, Lowe's, and Home Depot are okay. <laughs> Come on! It's just a mask and safety precautions. <laughs> How about a little hush money? <laughs> Here's $2,400 that we stole out of your paycheck in the first place. Enjoy. Buy something with it from a big corporation. Cash is dirty. We can't give change. There's a coin shortage. Use your card. <laughs> in four months, they convince you to use a traceable card for everything. <laughs> in less than four months, government closed public schools, then restructured education under the guise of public safety. In less than four months, our government demonstrated how easily people assimilate to guidelines that have no scientific premise whatsoever when you are fearful. <laughs> In less than four months, our government successfully instilled fear in a majority of the population in America that allows them to control every aspect of your life, including what you eat, where you go, who you see, and your toilet paper. <laughs> and the most dangerous and terrifying part, people are not afraid of the government who removed their freedom. They're afraid of their neighbors, family, and friends. <laughs> and they hate those that won't comply. It's absolutely terrifying to me that so many people don't question authority. They are willing to surrender their critical thinking skills and independence. They just gave up without thinking, without a fight. Do you know what's coming next? It's just a vaccine. Come on, it's for the greater good. <laughs> Wait until you're told that you can't enter any store or business without proof of the COVID-19 vaccine. Wait until you can't go to public events or get on a plane without proof receiving the vaccine. Don't think it's possible? <laughs> well, you already allowed the government to say when you can go outside, where you're allowed to go and accepted a new unproven digital education for your kids in the last hundred days. You followed blindly because you were told to do so. You're kidding yourself. You think the mass behavior won't be repeated with a vaccine or whatever the next step is. <laughs> I don't follow politics. I don't care about that stuff. I don't think about it. Six million Jewish people were exterminated in Germany because 97% of the population cowered to populist control. Nobody wanted to think about it. It's easier just to ignore it. But that couldn't happen here in America, right? <laughs> they got you without a thought, without a fight. Just like France, just like Russia, just like China. Welcome, comrade. <laughs>
all of you, the system that knows so much, you decide what's right or wrong the same way that you decide what's funny or not. Well, okay, I, I think I, I might understand that you did this to start a movement, to become a, a symbol. Come on, Murray. Do I look like the kind of clown that could start a movement? I killed those guys because they were awful. Everybody is awful these days. It's enough to make anyone crazy. Okay, so that's it. You're crazy. That's your defense for killing three young men? No. They couldn't carry a tune to save their lives. Oh, why is everybody so upset about these guys? If it was me dying on the sidewalk, you'd walk right over me. I pass you every day and you don't notice me. But these guys, what, because Thomas Wayne went and cried about them on TV? You have a problem with Thomas Wayne, too. Yes, I do. Have you seen what it's like out there, Murray? Do you ever actually leave the studio? Everybody just yells and screams at each other. Nobody's civil anymore. Nobody thinks what it's like to be the other guy. You think men like Thomas Wayne ever think what it's like to be someone like me? To be somebody but themselves, they don't. They think that we'll just sit there and take it like good little boys, that we won't werewolf and go wild. You finished? I mean, there's so much self-pity, Arthur. You sound like you're making excuses for killing those young men. Not everybody, and I'll tell you this, not everyone is awful. You're awful, Murray. Me? I'm awful? Oh, yeah, how am I awful? Playing my video. Inviting me on the show. You just wanted to make fun of me. You're just like the rest of them. You don't know the first thing about me, pal. Look what happened because of what you did, what it led to. There were riots out there. Two policemen are in critical condition. You're <laughs> laughing. You're laughing. Someone was killed today because of what you did. I know. How about another joke, Murray? No, I think we've had enough of your jokes. What do you get? I don't think so. When you cross I think a mentally ill loner with a society it. that abandons him and treats him like trash! Call the police, I'll man. tell you what you get! Call the police! You get what you fucking deserve! <laughs> Is this a joke, or is Kanye West serious about his run for the presidency? Yesterday, he announced the formation of a new political party, which he named, get this, the birthday party. Because when we win, it's everybody's birthday, he says. I have decided in 2020 to run for president. Perhaps Kanye got a taste of life in the White House when he visited President Trump at the Oval Office in 2018. This week, he registered to vote for the first time in his life and announced his running mate. And as you'd expect from Kanye, it's an eccentric selection. Her name is Michelle Tidball. She's 57. She's from Cody, Wyoming, where Kanye and Kim own a ranch. And she identifies herself as a biblical life coach. According to one published report, there is concern that Kanye may be in the throes of a manic high. He has been open about his struggles with bipolar disorder. Now look what we headed to. Others say he's doing all this to promote a new album. It's totally a joke. We're four months out from the election, uh, so it's pretty clear I think this is more of a vanity exercise. I think it's a guy who's bored with COVID-19. That shit crazy. <laughs> I actually say his... that on his album. Do you? I say I'm batshit crazier mind. than Ye and Sarah Palin. Oh, look at this. Yeah, that's a real thing. Oh, good Balenciaga. lord. That's what? a real thing. So one side has a t-shirt, yeah. and then the other thing is sewn to the front, yeah. but like it doesn't even, it looks like it's hanging there. Yeah, it it's just hanging. Look like, it is just hanging there. But it doesn't even look like you're wearing it. 
It looks it's, like it's stapled just to there. the front of your shirt. <sighs> what? What? Hold on. Go back to that price. It's, yeah, $1,300. Oh, yeah. $1,300. That's what I was saying. That, that's one? worse than the T-shirt. You want to buy one right now? Oh, my <laughs> God. $1,300. Wow. For that. Did you see Kanye jumped on the table at a, a university? Yeah. Was he talking about leaving Elon Musk alone? That dude's lost his mind, man. What's going on? I don't know, man. I, I, you know, there's a lot of people that speculate, and that's all I would say this is from me. This but is... ever since that man's mother died, he's been on a downward spiral, like losing his shit. Well, uh, you know, I think he's suffering from some serious, like no bullshit. Shit. He he did get into a serious car accident, right? Uh -huh. Broke his jaw. Yeah, yeah. Before he was that, seriously yeah, injured. Long, a few years before that. That, yeah. that is not a joke. No. Like brain trauma and. You, Listen, I'm not a doctor or, or anything even remotely related to one, but I've been around a lot of people who've been hitting the head a lot. That shit's real. Like that, that will change your brain chemistry. It's 100% legit. Like getting hit in the head is no bueno. And car accidents will fuck people up forever. Some people, some people are okay. They get, they recover. But boy, there's a lot of people that come back from some significant head trauma and just they're scrambled, man. And he might be one of those. And it also might be what I talked about in my last special, Triggered. But you live with crazy bitches long enough. I remember that. They yeah, get yeah, to yeah. you. Something happens. You were talking about the soul-stealing succubi. <laughs> it might be true. Dude, that was an amazing routine, I got to tell you. Well, I was trying to figure out a way that I could get away with making fun of Bruce Jenner without being called transphobic. <laughs> I had to go a circuitous route. It was brilliant. I go a long route, but so I had to drag it Kanye at the in there too. First time I yeah. saw it, yeah. I had to drag Kanye in that too. Dude, look, dude, every look, drag look every him. male that's gone into that yes. circle every into one. it. Every one, every single lost one. Them all. It's spooky. Yeah, they, Lamar they, Odom was a, like a world champion yes. basketball player, dude. He just got cracked out. Got Reggie Bush, what world. happened to him? Reggie Bush got wise and fucking. But he just dipped? bailed. He's got my old car. Okay. Because he's so much different than everybody else. Like Elon Musk, like a lot of other people. Sure. Pe what's up? Say, did, did the, uh, when he used the Confederate flag, do you know about his statements on that? He, he said that. Like he, he used this in a quote. What does he say? Oh, react how you want. Any energy is good energy. The Confederate flag represented slavery in a way. That's my abstract take on what I know about it, right? So I wrote this song, New Slaves, took the Confederate flag and made it my flag. It's my flag now. What are you gonna do? <laughs> now what are you gonna do? Right, well, it's how yeah. can I take my equity and see if I'm so dope? But that's also his recognition that you can take something like the N-word and use it as a positive. You could do sure. anything. I mean, look. It's a conversation that I think is a fascinating one, the conversation of reparations, because there can be no doubt that something horrible happened to the black community and they're still suffering from it, mm -hmm. especially in the Deep South when you look at these places where the people who lived are the direct descendants of slaves. Yeah. And then these are the same impoverished neighborhoods that no one's ever done anything to try to fix. Right. So how do you fix it? Call black history or what I would say African history in chronological order. Before we were slaves, we were kings. So how do you, how do you have... A whole entire nation of 40 some odd million black people and majority of them never heard of Queen Angola, who never heard of the Songhai Empire, the Mali Empire, you know, none of this stuff. Right. King Mansa Musa. How do you how do you how do you raise a people's level of awareness about this stuff? And, and how do you elevate them to want to do things in life when they think they are a slave? That's the first thing that you have to do to help black people. You have to teach them who they are. That expression before they were slaves, they were kings. The problem with that is a king is a monarch, and a monarch is one person who controls giant groups of people. You can't have a bunch of kings. There's not a lot of kings. You can't have a nation of kings. Correct, but that's very different from saying, you know, that we had four kings, right? Let's say there were just four, right? Mm -hmm. that's, you right. actually have to see at least one king. I see what you're saying. You know, at least right. say. So see one advanced human being that also 